Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn more for your CSEC preparation, please hit the subscribe button and your bell notification so that for this week especially, you will get almost everything you need to know for your preparations for your CSEC exams. And if you are returning to the channel, thank you so much for coming back. Stay tuned. There is much more to come. Today we look at Mom's Lo Mom Luby and the Social Worker by Kristen Hunter. The title. The title right away defines the antagonist and the protagonist. There is no doubt that there is going to be a struggle between the shrewd applicant for state assistance and the system that is definitely trying to frustrate her. Now the setting is on Division Street, which is an American city, Chicago perhaps, and for many critics this is what they have decided on, that it is actually Chicago. Mom Luby serves food along with illegal corn liquor to different card players who come by her place in a back room. The story was actually written in 1968, and this suggests that the action takes place at about the same period. Of course, it must be after 1946, if one is to make sense of Mrs. Rush Miss Rushmore's reaction to the report that the children's father had left them between 1942 and onwards, right? The atmosphere is humorous, yes, and it contrasts the easygoing lifestyle of the poor black community with the ridiculously complicated system where they have to apply for state assistance and the process, the procedure that they go through to get this, and sometimes they do not get this. Now, the plot is not hard to understand, and it's perhaps one of the easy, easiest ones on the list of short stories for CSEC. Mom Ruby is looking more of a grandmother. She is almost at the age of being a grandmother, and yet she pretends to be the mother of Elijah, who is 13 years old, and Pudding, who is five years old, and who have been orphaned, right? She applies for the state aid when she wants to get a better life for them, and she really doesn't look like, and she really doesn't appear to be a mother, but when she applies, she does tell them that she is the mother of the kids. Now, they return from a visit to the welfare office, and of course, we begin to see the routine that they endure every day, serving food, corn liquor to regular customers in a curtain black back room. And then here comes Miss Rushmore. She is a prim, brown-skinned welfare officer. She comes to inspect the homes. As always, if you are applying for aid, any assistance from the government, there are people who are going to come and who will inspect your home just to ensure that you are within the confines and the boundaries and the legal aspects of getting aid from the state. Now, Miss Rushmore ignores Mom's, Mom Luby's invitations to relax and to have something to eat. Of course, this may have gone, gone against her worth ethics, but at the same time, maybe it is simply her personality. Soon, she gives up the attempts to discuss financial planning and the family relationships because Mom Luby gives frivolous replies, simple, silly replies, basically, and gently reprimands her for getting into her business, her private business. When mom asks about getting clothes and shoes for the children, the lady's directions are ridiculously complicated and mom Luby ends up enticing her to follow her on her rounds of what she does every day to take care of these kids. They return two hours later, the social worker is bewildered, out of her which she's shocked, right? Um, she, she's shocked because she sees the drinking, the bewildered lady is happy to join in the drinking of corn liquor. Corn liquor. She confesses that Mom Luby does not need her help. As she realizes that Mom Luby serves as a midwife, she medicates an old woman, she helps to get a boy out of jail, she is a guest speaker at a funeral, and all of these are done without the proper licensing licenses. But at the same time, because she sees Mom Luby doing just about everything to take care of these kids, she still becomes worries, worried about the children surrounding. She is, of course, amazed, and everybody who reads this story would be amazed at how effective Mom Luby is. And when she jokes that the state should pay her, the lady ruefully points out that Mom is not qualified. This brings laughter, and as the regulars return to the card game, Mom reminds the children that they will need an education to make sense of the system, and she also reassures them that no matter what happens, they will be well. 
Because right away, we understand that Mom Luby is actually a go-getter. She tries to do what she can do, even if these kids are not hers. She tries to do what she can do within the confines of the whole environment so that the kids can have a better life. The conflict in the short story is between Mom Luby and the lady who represents, and this represents the struggle of the deserving, deserving poor to access the services of state agencies. Now there is irony in all of this. And the irony is that while Mom Luby succeeds in convincing the lady that she is worthy of state assistance, her unconventional way of living means that she cannot qualify for the assistance that she seeks. Now, there aren't much characters in this short stories story, even though the four characters here are perhaps more than some of the other short stories we have studied. But guess what? There are four of them. They are all interesting characters, and therefore it is so easy to remember them. Elijah is 13 years old. He is an observant narrator with a sense of humor and an eye for detail. Now, Elijah and his sister, they have lived with Mom Luby for about three years after their mother died. Elijah is only anxious that there is going to be no change. He is aware of the illegal activities that Mom Luby carries out, but he doesn't judge her because he also knows that this is the way to help them. Of course, he does his part by helping her with the chores, and he's willing to do this. Then there is Pudding, or Arletha. She is five years old. She is Elijah's sister. And her name comes because she is weighty. She has on weight. She's fat. And the fact that she loves grown-up company, especially when food is around. She's a nervous child. And she this nervousness manifests when she visits the state building. And she has to be chased from the hind curtain while mom is trying to tell the lady that she is sleeping. And later has to be dragged crying away from the bowl of potato salad by Elijah. Of course, the most interesting is Mom Luby. She is a community godmother. She takes care of just about everybody. And if you are in the Caribbean setting, you will clearly understand the, the way it was back then, where people adopted children illegally and, well, not illegally, I should say, informally. They adopted children informally. And many of us will have had aunts and uncles who are not blood relatives, but because our grandparents had taken them in at a young, very young age, then they become our definite aunts and uncles, right? So, Mom Luby is one such woman. She fosters Elijah and Pudding, and at the same time, she does many good works in her community. But, nonetheless, she operates a legal drinking room in her house, she pays the police off, and she is willing to lie to the authorities in order to improve the children's condition. The ethical implications here? Well, some people would say that she is wrong, yes, but at the end of the day, her intentions are good, and her intentions really center around trying to help two children who have no parents, who are orphans, and who really and truly are in need of help. Now, Mom Luby is able to convince Miss Rushmore of her value to the community, but of course, she objects to the ridiculous problems, challenges, obstacles that gets in her way from getting help from the, from the child welfare community. And of course, she promises the children that they will manage just fine just as they always have, whether or not they get help from the government. Miss Rushmore is the final character. She reminds us of Mount Rushmore and its patriotic rock carvings of American presidents. Did the author, did the writer use choose a name for a reason? Well, perhaps. She represents the state. She's a social worker who pays a surprise visit to check on Mom Lewis's house. The very day that Mom Luby has applied for assistance for the children. She is prepared to find fault. Of course, this is her job, and to, to see any deception that is there. But she is put out by Mom's unexpected and un unhelpful responses to her questions. She cannot resist accompanying Mom Luby around just to see the amazing amount of good that Mom Luby has done in the community over time. And all of this, she sees, Miss Rushmore sees, is being done in two hours. Of course, she's confused by the entire situation, and in some ways, she is impressed by mom's social skill, work skills, but she also notes that mom Luby does not qualify. She's laughed right off the, out of the door by everybody. And I mean, for her, then, it would be that mom Luby is not qualified because mom Luby gets by just fine without the help and assistance from the state. So, of course, this is where she perhaps says that mom Luby is not qualified. 
Now we move on to the themes to explore. There is welfare services, obstacles to assistance, illegal activities, a woman's challenge, beating the system, informal adoptions. Of course, people, there is also racial issues. There are also women in the society, gender, that kind of thing. So um, keep an open mind as you move through studying the themes of a short story. The point of view, very simple. Hunter's first person narrator is a 13 year old Elijah. He records only what he knows, what he thinks and what he witnesses. However, he gives us these details and with his details, he helps us to see and understand all the characters in the story. And we also realize that Elijah enjoys and recognizes the humor and ironies in the situation that he describes for the readers. The style. The action of the story is related in sequence. There is a sequence, there is a pattern with everything being presented through the conversation between Mom Luby and the lady. Speeches are being introduced by the immediate sounding she says rather than the expected she said. So basically he is, the, the style of the story is that it, it would suggest that it is in the present. The narrator also uses the language of the black community in both narration and dialogue, except for the speech of the qualified brown skill social worker. This and the reference to lifestyle details, both good and bad, make the story very realistic. And even if we find humorous exaggerations in the story, guess what? We do enjoy it because of how it is presented, the, the, the writer's style. So thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. Stay tuned. Keep your bell buttons on. Keep your red buttons on for more as I go through all 10 of the short stories in preparation for the CSEC examination. Thank you so much for stopping by.